Good morning, and welcome to all those who worship with us today in so many ways, those here in the building, and those who worship with us through um, TV broadcasts, live stream, Facebook, so many ways that people gather together today to worship. I'm Pastor Mary Iverson, and I welcome you to the weekly worship at Good Shepherd Lutheran Church. Thank you to our camera technician, Pat Ogenen. I appreciate it so much, Pat. Uh, she makes our broadcasts possible. Thank you to the worship team, pianist Jean, the singers, Andy, the screeners, who are here at the doors now. Thank you so much. Few announcements. Confirmation students, grades seven and eight, please watch for a postcard that will come in your mail, probably already arrived or it will come by tomorrow. Confirmation students grades nine, um, please see me next week at rehearsal on Saturday. Members who received an invitation in the mail to write an Advent devotion, you should know who you are because it came specifically just to a few members. We're looking forward to hearing from you in the next two weeks. So please reach out to Andy in the church office as you complete your devotion. We are making a congregational Advent and Christmas devotional. Next Sunday, we have our 9 a.m. worship, both in person and online. And then at 1015, we will have our confirmation Sunday. Four of our students will stand up and affirm their faith. Those being confirmed that day are Anna Delight, Chloe Litke, Kaden Neubauer and Brian Posine. Those attending the worship in person will be just the guests invited by the family members. So that service is not open for everyone at 1015. But please know that we will be live streaming a second service next week. So we'll be live streaming 9 a.m. and then again live streaming at 1015. For anyone who would like to worship alongside the youth and help them celebrate their Confirmation Sunday. So the two live streamed. Only the 9 a.m. worship will be on Facebook Live though. We won't be doing both on Facebook because of the way that we're doing the service. The office is staffed during the week and available to assist you during the week I'm on call 24 seven and I work all week long. This week I'll be in the office on Wednesday during the day. The other days I'm working at home and available as needed by you. One pastor is missing again today. I put my arm around her figuratively. Meg is still recovering from hip replacement surgery. Her recovery continues to go very well. She is now home and doing her recovery there. I know she was over walking the stairs in the church yesterday. And she continues to thank you for, her, uh, for the ongoing prayers for her. So, and I know she's worshiping with us on Facebook now. So we say hi to her and wish her well as her healing continues. And those are all the announcements that I have. Worship continues with Red Hymnal 715, Christ Be Our Light. Longing for light, we wait in darkness. Longing for truth, we turn to you. Make us your own, your holy people. Your word alone has 
has power to save us. Make us your living voice. Christ, be our light. Shine in our hearts. Shine through the darkness. Christ, be our light. Shine in your church. Gather today. Many the gifts, many the people, many the hearts that yearn to belong. Let us be servants to one another, signs of your kingdom come. Christ be our light, shine in our hearts, shine through the dark. Let us pray. Gracious God, you have led your chosen people for generations. Remind us always of your faithfulness. Help us to trust in the next steps you have stored up for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The scripture reading for today is from Exodus now. We jump into the second book of the Bible. <clears throat> reading the story called the Passover story. Yesterday we read, or last Sunday we read about Joseph, Jacob's favored son. Many generations after Joseph, Jacob's descendants had become slaves in Egypt, facing increasing persecution from Pharaoh, and God sent Moses, of course, we remember that story of Moses, where he went to Pharaoh and he said those words, let my people, let my people go. And as a part of their preparations to escape, God instructs Moses to have them prepare a special meal and then says to them at the same time, you're going to make this meal every year to remember, remember this. Reading now from Exodus 13, Moses said to the people, remember. Remember this day on which you came out of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, because the Lord God brought you out of there by the strength of hand. No leavened bread shall be eaten. They didn't have time for it to rise. Today in the month of Abib, you are going out. When the Lord brings you into the land of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Hivites and the Jebusites, which he swore, this land which he swore to your ancestors to give you, a land flowing with milk and honey. You shall observe this, you shall keep this observance in this month. For seven days you shall eat unleavened bread, all to remember. And on the seventh day there will be a festival to the Lord. Unleavened bread shall be eaten for seven days. No leavened bread should be seen in your, present, in your possession. No leavened bread shall be among you in your territory. And you will tell your child on that day, it is because of the what the Lord did for me when I came out of Egypt. Here. Listen, listen, God is calling through the word inviting, offering forgiveness, comfort and joy. Listen, listen, God is calling through the word inviting, offering forgiveness, comfort and joy. Jesus gave his mandate, share the good news that he came to save us and set us free. Listen, listen, God is calling through the word inviting, offering forgiveness, comfort and joy. Listen, listen, God is calling through the word inviting, offering forgiveness, 
comfort and joy. Grace to you and peace from God the Father and from our Lord and our Savior, who is Jesus the Christ. Once upon a time there was a couple, an elderly couple, and as they aged they realized they were struggling to remember things. So during a visit with their doctor they discussed these memory issues that they were having and the doctor suggested that they start writing things down to help remember those day-to-day -day things that they were struggling to remember. So later that night, while they were in the living room watching television, the old man got up from his chair and asked his wife, do you want anything from the kitchen while I go there? His wife said, yes, yes, would you please get me a bowl of ice cream? So the husband agreed. And his wife, remembering the suggestion from the doctor, said, honey, don't you think you should write it down? to remember it. No, he said, I can remember that. You want a bowl of ice cream. She said, you know, but that's not all I want. Can you put some chocolate sauce on it? And, and you really should write it down. No, he said, I can remember that. A bowl of ice cream with chocolate sauce on it. But there's more, she said. I would like whipped cream on it and, and put a cherry on top. And, and I really think you should please, you know, write it down. And he was certain he could remember it, and he repeated the request back to her. He toddled off to the kitchen, and 20 minutes later, he came back to his wife in the living room, and he handed her a plate of bacon and eggs. And she took one look at it and said, You forgot the toast. Okay. Always remember, there was a groaner in there, wasn't it? <laughs> okay, always remember, never forget. That would be the sermon title if I had to provide you one. As we're reading our way through the Bible, we've left Genesis and now we are reading from the book of Exodus and reading, as I said, this story that's often called the Passover story always remember never forget is the theme of that story last week's story had us reading about jacob who had this group of 12 sons he did have daughters as well and his youngest and most favored son was joseph and joseph uh kind of lorded it over or ruled it over his brothers that he was the favored son and they sold him off what they thought was to slavery joseph became the ruler of egypt and his whole family ended up joining him in egypt because they're refugees because there was a terrible drought back in their homeland so they settled in egypt and they stayed there even after the famine had um, recovered in their homeland area. In fact, many Israelites ended up settling in Egypt so much so that the population of Israelites in Egypt grew and grew so much that Pharaoh got nervous when their population was growing. And he subtly, quietly made them to be slaves there in Egypt, the Israelites were. He forced them to make bricks out of mud and straw and for generations then it was a horrible life for them and this went on like i said for generations for 430 years this went on and finally after they pleaded and pleaded and pleaded with god get us out of here we want freedom god stepped in and and called moses to come forward to uh please help the people be released from slavery. Moses didn't want to do it. He said, I'm not a leader. I have a stutter. How am I supposed to speak for you? And so he gave him Aaron as his right hand. And together they were to work to call the people of God to freedom out of Egypt. And the message, of course, that Moses brought to Pharaoh time and time and time again was, 
let my people go. Of course, Pharaoh didn't listen every time Moses went with him to that message. So God sent plagues one after another to get the people free to try to get Pharaoh to listen. Flies, locusts, boils, one plague after another. And after each, Moses would go to Pharaoh with that same message, let my people go, and Pharaoh would refuse. By the time the 10th plague was coming, God spoke with Moses about this plague and said, this plague will be different than all the others. It will not be like the rest. This one will involve death. So Moses gathered the people of God and told them about this 10th plague said, this is the time you need to put your faith in God. The instructions from God were, go home. Okay, gather a lamb. And not just any lamb, but a perfect lamb with no blemishes, is what it says in the Bible. Slaughter the lamb as a sacrifice, and then take that blood of the lamb and put it on your door frame, marking this home as a home of the beloved children of God. And then the rest of the instructions were about preparing to flee. God said, you will be free after this. Make bread. Don't have time for it to rise. Don't use yeast. And be dressed and ready to escape from Egypt immediately. And then the last instruction was kind of unusual. The last instruction was when they gathered their food and had this last meal, they were to have bitter herbs and eat them with the meal. And God said, the reason why is to help you remember how bitter this experience was to live in Egypt as slaves for over 400 years. All this was the command from God. And so that night it happened, as had been prophesied, death came to the firstborn children in the homes that didn't have blood on the door frames. And in the morning, God commanded them to leave, to flee, to take off and run for freedom and get away from the slavery. And that's the story of the Passover. The story doesn't end there, we know. The exodus out of slavery into a life of freedom is such a big part of the story that God wants us to really remember this story, really remember all that God has done. So when it all hap happened, God actually commanded, remember. Remember how I brought you freedom. Never forget what I did for you. Much like the Doctor's instructions to that older couple who were having memory issues. Remember the advice was, write it down. Okay, God said, write this story, write it down in your hearts. Because I want the people of God to always remember this story. And I want you to tell your sons and your daughters and your grandchildren, each year, remember the event and relive it in a way to never forget. So the Passover is a holiday that's celebrated each year. Even during the times of Jesus, it was celebrated that time that Moses went to Pharaoh and got the people free from slavery. One year, Jesus was in Jerusalem celebrating the Passover, and he gathered with his closest friends in an upper room, and they were eating the unleavened bread and drinking wine and telling the story and remembering the slavery that the ancestors had experienced. And then Jesus changed the holiday meal and he told them, I am the unblemished lamb that would be sacrificed on the altar to get you free. Now, not just from slavery in Egypt, but free from the chains that are holding you in of your sins. And I will bring your forgiveness. He said, he took the bread and he took the cup and he said, from now on the traditions of this meal change. Eat this and remember from this day forward, 
remember me and my sacrifice for you. Do this to remember me. I am making a greater sacrifice to forgive your sins. Remember. Don't forget. We all struggle with memory issues, some more than others. A researcher at John Hopkins did a study about things that we commonly forget. 83% of us struggle to remember names. 60% of us most often forget where something is at. You know, we put our keys down one place and then we go searching. And the remainder of the list, and it goes down from there, we forget phone numbers and words and what was said and faces. We struggle with remembering. Memory issues may rattle many of us, sometimes severely. Tom Wetzel Sr., known by many as Doc Wetzel, was a beloved member of our congregation, a man of deep faith. And as a veterinarian, he was known by lots of people in the area. Near the end of his life, Doc Wetzel was diagnosed with memory loss issues. His memory was fading. And I shared this story in the midst of his funeral sermon, so I feel like I have freedom to share it after preaching it already once. When I was meeting with him in his last months, meeting with Doc Wetzel, he told me that his prayer was that in the midst of his memory issues that he would not forget God. And the beautiful truth of it is that God never forgot Doc Wetzel. God never forgot the promise that he made to Doc Wetzel and that promise that he makes to us as well, that he will be our God forever and that we will be God's people forever. In the French Reformed Christian Church, they have a wonderful tradition about memories during baptism. When a baby is baptized, and they baptize like we do, but then they add this one thing on. When the baby's baptized, the pastor holds the child and speaks directly to that child, saying this, For you, little one, Christ came. For you, little child, Christ died. You know nothing about this right now, but we will continue to tell you this story until you confess it yourself. We will help you remember. May we do that with one another. Always remember, never forget. God delivers us from bondage to freedom, and in Christ we are free from sin and death. Always remember. Speak it out loud to yourself each day. Tell others when they let you know that it's tough and they're feeling hopeless. God loves us. God gifts us with salvation. God will never leave us. Always remember never forget. Thanks be to God. Amen. Raised from soil, raised from dead, 
together our faith, our common belief using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Good morning. Your gifts matter. Your gifts, when combined with countless others who also share their gifts faithfully, becomes a significant treasure to our ministry, a meaningful encouragement to our leadership and staff, and an amazing witness to the ch character of this great church. Thank you for your generous gifts. I remind you that you are able to make a donation to Good Shepherd by visiting the church website. The address is goodshepherdwells.org. You can also put your offering in the mail and send it to Good Shepherd in Wells. And for those of you who are worshiping here this morning in the building, you are welcome to leave your offering in the basket by the door as you depart. Again, thank you for your faithful giving. Gracious and holy God, we give you thanks for all you have done throughout history for your beloved children. You freed your people. You've stayed with us always. You've blessed us with all that we need. Help us always remember and be grateful for all you have done for us. We rejoice, loving God, that you always remember us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, we lift up in prayer the President the First Lady and the White House staff, and others who are sick with COVID-19. We continue to pray for all people and their families who continue to suffer. We pray for those who have died from the effects of this virus. We grieve the over 200,000 people who've died during this pandemic just in our own country. Tend the sick, Lord Jesus Christ. Give rest to the weary. Bless the dying soothe the suffering. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, our farmers have worked morning, noon, and night to get crop in the ground, to care for every seed to grow, food to feed a hungry world. Now we ask for dry weather, abundant yields, safety during the harvest. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we lift up in prayer this day all those who are in need. We pray for those who are lonely, those who are suffering, those in need. 
We pray for our beloved who are in need of strength and healing as we lift up in prayer. Shirley Lesto, who will have carpal tunnel surgery later this week. Doug Schroeder, Judy Melcher, Barb Fox, who is beginning chemotherapy, her daughter, Gail Reddig, Meg Sander, Ruth Hagen, Edie Zabel, who is awaiting heart surgery, Deanne Mershon, healing from foot surgery, and Bebo Getchell. We pray as well for those that we lift up now silently within our hearts. Grant them all strength and healing and peace. Lord, in your mercy, confident in God's attention and love, we pray all these things in the name of Jesus, our gracious healer. Amen. Shepherd me, O God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. Shepherd me, O God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now, bless you forever. Amen. Our sending song is 583 in the Red Hymnal. Thank my life that I may be consecrated, Lord, to Thee. Take my moments and my days, let them flow in ceaseless praise. Take my hands and let them move at the impulse of thy love. Take my feet and let them breeze with the beautiful for thee. Take my life that I may be consecrated, Lord, to thee. Take my moments and my days, let them flow in ceaseless praise. Take my voice and let me sing, always only for my King. Take my lips and let them be filled with messages from Thee. Take my life that I may be, consecrated, Lord, to Thee. Take my moments and my days, let them flow in ceaseless praise. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.